Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Did you know that Topaz Labs Gigapixel and Bloom are now built into Photoshop? That's right. You don't have to pay extra for them. They don't work as a plugin. They're actually part of the current version of Photoshop. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use them. Now, if you're not familiar with applications such as Gigapixel and Bloom, they're upscalers. And the reason why you may want to use an upscaler is if you have a smaller low resolution image and you want to print it. For example, I have this image. And if I go up to image, down to image size, you'll notice that it's 1,408 by 768 pixels. This is a pretty small image. And if I go to my desktop, I have a image resolution and print guide that is available for free from my website. I'll have a link to it in the description below this video. You'll notice that if I wanted to get a high quality print with this image, at its current resolution, the best I probably could do is like a 4x5 or a 4x6. So I'm limited. What you can do, though, is you could use an upscaler to upscale it so that you could get a larger print. And that's where Gigapixel and Bloom come in. Now, in order to use them, just open the image up into Photoshop as I have here, and then go up to Image, and then down to generative upscale. And you'll notice that there's going to be three different options. We have the Firefly upscaler. This is basically the Photoshop upscaler. And then we have Gigapixel and Bloom. You'll also notice that it says partner models and it has this little crown here. That's mean, that means that these use generative credits. Not only do they use generative credits though, they use premium generative credits. And let me explain what that is. I'm going to click on the little link here and it will open up my browser to this page. Here it will explain how many credits it will use. Now with your Creative Cloud subscription, you get so many credits every month. So hopefully you have some credits banked and this won't really cost you anything. It's part of your subscription. But if you use up all your generative credits, you would have to pay more. So with that said, let's scroll down and we'll go down to this section here and you'll notice that Topaz Labs Gigapixel Sharpen and Denoise. It's up to 25 megapixels. It's 10 credits per generation. Above 25, up to 56, it's 20 credits per generation. And then Bloom, between 1 and 9 megapixels, is 35 credits per generation. So it uses quite a few of your generative credits in order to use either of these. Whereas if you just use the upscaler that comes with Photoshop, it doesn't use any generative credits at all. So with that said, let's go back to Photoshop and let me show you how to use this and why you might want to use one over the other. Let's start with the Firefly upscaler. This is the upscaler that comes with Photoshop and it doesn't use any generative credits. Now you have the option to upscale it twice as large or four times as large. Let's try four times as large. That will produce a print that is 5,632 by 3,072 pixels, or it will produce an image that is that size. And that, of course, will give us a much larger print, high quality print. So let's upscale this. I'll click on upscale. And the reason why I'm doing this is I'm going to use all three. That is, I'll do this Firefly first, then I'll do the Gigapixel, then I'll do the Bloom, and we'll compare all of them to one another. And that way you could determine whether or not you want to spend those generative credits. You might use them for something else, like generative, you know, you know, to add things into an image or whatever. Now you could see it upscaled it and it gave me a brush and it gives us a little, um, mask here. So that way, if I wanted to paint in black, I could bring back some of the original image. But with Firefly, you would probably never, ever need to do that. Let me just scroll over to the woman's face. You'll notice that her face, you know, she's pretty much the same. So there's the image as though I just enlarged it. I didn't use any upscaler. Then with the Firefly upscaler, that's what it looks like. So it looks pretty much the same. It's might cleaned up just a little bit. So it looks maybe slightly better. 
know if the tet the screen uh, command zero on my Mac control zero on a PC. As a matter of fact, I'll hit command minus on my Mac control minus on a PC just to make it a little smaller. And we'll go back to the original image. You notice it did open it up in its own tab. It will do that for all three of these models. So it's not going to touch the original image in the original tab. We'll open up new tabs. All right, now let's try Gigapixel. So again, I'm going to go up to Image, then down to Generative Upscale. And this time we're going to try this Topaz Gigapixel. It has an option here for face recovery. This will help recover detail in blurry or low resolution faces. Now, I purposely chose this stock image because there's a person in it. So I'm going to click face recovery and then I'll go to 4x just as we did last time. And it will produce that same size print 5632 by 3072 and we'll click upscale. Now, this will take a little longer to do than the Firefly. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if it sends this up to Adobe servers to do this. Um, a test would be to turn off your Wi-Fi and or just disconnect your computer from your Wi-Fi and then see if it actually still works. Uh, but I never took the time to do that. So maybe someone in the comments section could... Um, could let us know if, in fact, it does send the image up to Adobe servers. Now, you can see we're here, and we'll go on her face again. There is before. Now, this, again, is just as though I just took that image that was 1408 by 768 and just enlarged it without using an upscaler. And here it is with Gigapixel. And you can see it cleaned up uh, her face quite well, so it looks pretty decent. It didn't do much to the background and other areas of the image as far as removing noise. It did clean it up a little bit. You could see her jacket looks a little sharper. The trees in the background look just like there's less noise on the trees. But overall, the main improvement was uh, to the person. It looks much better. And if we go back and compare it to the Firefly, which I probably shouldn't have maybe zoomed out, we could see that it is just much better than that. So there's the Firefly version, and here's the Gigapixel version. All right, let's try Bloom now. So this now uses quite a few of those generative credits in order to use it. Uh, but uh, I'll show you what, what I'm talking about in a minute. I don't like it personally, <laughs> but we'll go to Bloom. Now, the thing with Bloom is it only will give you a, uh, an image up to 9 megapixels. And if I go to 4x, you'll see that it's the output is too large. It exceeds 9 megapixels. So I actually can't do 4x using Bloom. So we'll stay with 2x. And you'll notice it has this creativity slider. Now, I actually, in this video, I'm going to show you it in three different positions. For now, though, let's start at the default position right at 5 so that you could see what it does. And then we'll click upscale. Now this one will take, it says one to three minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the recording and when it is done, I'll restart the recording and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, it just finished and it is on the bloom version of the image. Now you'll look at the person's face and then let me show you the previous version, or the version, the original version, I should say, that is just blown up. And you can see that it changed the face quite a bit. It changed the mountains in the background quite a bit. It added, looks like some snow in the image here. And that is why I personally don't care for Bloom, because Bloom will actually change reality. Um, so it's not something I'm very fond of. You can see it, it really looks like a different person uh, with that set. So let me go back to the original image and let's try Bloom again, but I'm going to take that slider all the way down. So we'll go to Image, Generative Upscale. Again, we're going to use Bloom, but we'll take this Creativity slider down to zero. And I, again, I only could do 2x. It won't let me do 4x. So then we'll upscale this again. And by the way, the 2x upscale will produce an image that is 2,816 by 1,536 pixels. So we'll click upscale. Now, again, I'm going to pause the recording and we'll come back when it's finished.
Okay, the progress bar is right towards the end, so it's just about ready to finish up. And then, of course, it's going to open the image on a new tab, and we'll take a look at what it looks like. And here we are, and you can see it looks pretty much like the previous one, in my opinion. Uh, there's before, and there's after. There's before, and there's after. And here's the previous version here. Let me see if I can move it over just a little bit, make it look a little more. There we go. There and there. And then, of course, here again is the Gigapixel version. And then here is the Firefly version. And let's do this one more time. Let's again uh, go up to Image, down to Generative Upscale. We're going to stay with this bloom, but this time I'll take the Creativity slider and I'll put it on 10 and we'll upscale it. And again, the reason why I don't care for Bloom is because it really alters reality a little bit too much for my liking. Um, so, for example, if you didn't have a stock image like I'm using here and you had an image of your family and it was just maybe you had one of those little disposable cameras or something, so it's a film image that you scanned and it's small and you just want to upscale it, it might change the looks of all the people in your family and it just wouldn't be looking right. It wouldn't be something you'd want. That's why I don't care for Bloom. Plus, it uses quite a few generative credits. I think I mentioned it used like 30, if I'm not mistaken. So that's quite a few generative credits uh, to use on something that's going to change the looks of the people so much. And it even, it even is changing the trees in the background and the mountains in the far background uh, quite a bit as well. So that's why I personally um, just don't care for it as much as maybe Gigapixel, which granted does change reality slightly, but just not quite as much as Bloom does. So uh, it's almost towards the end, so I'm not going to pause the video here. But I, again, I will mention in the description below this video, I have a link to my website. You could download that free print resolution guide uh, that I have, and you could check out some of the other stuff I have on my website as well. Lots of free stuff, a lot of different keyboard shortcuts. Keyboard shortcuts for Photoshop, uh, for uh, Lightroom, stuff like that. Uh, so you could check all that out. I also have some full courses, some free mini courses you might want to check out. Um, again, I'll have that linked in the description below this video. Now, as you can see, the progress bar is right towards the end. And hopefully it won't take too much longer because I'm running out of things to talk about. And we'll look at having the creativity slider on 10, what it actually looks like. And here we are. We're on same thing. It has this kind of like, kind of looks like snow. That might even be a defect, actually, as opposed to snow. But you can see what she looks like here. And here's what the original looks, original image is like. So she has her eyes wider open. Um, she has, her hair's a little different. The hat's a lot smoother. Now, I mentioned that if you do use uh, any of these upscalers, they come with a mask. And I mentioned that you could get a brush. It will give you a brush automatically. And if you paint in black, so make sure black is the uh, front swatch and that you are clicked on the actual mask, you can bring back what is below, meaning this version of her, just by painting. You could see how you did that. So you can do that, but you could see that it's kind of noisy and it's kind of lower resolution. It doesn't look like fitting into the scene where everything else is really super sharp uh, compared, you know, compared to that. But that's why the mask is there. And then again, I just want to mention very quickly, you may, let's go to one of these four scale ones. And if I went up to image and down to image size, you could see at um, four scale, it's 5632 by 3072. And I'm just going to copy that 5632 by I think command C on my Mac. If I go back to the original image, I can upscale this manually uh, by just going to image, image size, and then putting in that 5632 here and clicking OK. And it will just upscale it. But it, you can see it's very low quality. That's why you want to use uh, an actual dedicated upscaler. Because what I just did here is I made the individual pixels bigger. What an upscale does is it will 
interpolate pixels. So the pixels don't get any larger. It adds more pixels. So it does that by using, you know, fancy math and stuff to interpolate what each of those pixels should be. And then it creates the upscaled image doing that using these, this interpolation of pixels. And uh, that's why it's always better to use an upscaler as opposed to just go in there and using, I'll call this the brute force method, just make it larger. Just doesn't look as good. So that's Topaz Labs Gigapixel and Bloom built into Photoshop, kind of free. It's part of Photoshop and you get generative credits with your subscription. But if you use up all those generative credits, you will have to pay for more if you really need to use it or wait for the next billing cycle and then you'll get more generative credits. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.